OK, so yes, so uh, instructions for the coming week, which will be the uh, last week in unit two, which is about the short stories. Uh, by the end of the class, we will know what are the stories we're going to have some questions through. We'd like to give you the names of the stories. All what you need to do is to just uh, have a look at them, uh, read what is the, the summary of each story, what are the most important themes each story is talking about, who is the author, uh, when was the story written, and uh, uh, the main characters, what is the message, what is the morale in each story. Just briefly, because these are going to be the, the ones you are going to have your final test in the unit, unit two, uh, uh, through those uh, short stories. Together with that, we will be working on some class exercises to get you uh, good grades. And those exercises, the aim behind each exercise is to develop a certain skill like presentation skills, like writing complex and compound uh, sentences, um, finding the grammatical mistakes and being able to write smoothly before we move on to a further um, uh, uh, objectives, the learning objectives. Again, so now we are still in unit two, which is about the short stories, and we are going to continue working on the short stories. Uh, I'm going to share with you a video that is really, really very helpful when you come to a short story analysis. So uh, I am going to uh, share with you my screen with a sound here, and this is going to be it. Okay, let's hear it from this. Be looking at how to analyze a short story. So the definition of, an of analysis is examining the parts to understand the whole. So we look at all the little pieces in which this case we're looking at the literary elements that are talked about in chapter six and we use those, uh, those to help us understand the theme of the story, the concept that the whole story revolves around or helps us understand more about. Remember stories have meaning. The meaning we're looking for right now is the theme the universal concept the story revolves around. So examining the parts to understand the whole, the theme. The literary elements we'll look at to help us understand the theme are characterization, setting, point of view, plot, language, style, and tone, all of that is one element, foreshadowing, symbolism, and irony. And the chapter six talks about these more in depth, so I'm gonna go on, but I'm gonna talk about a one of them I'm going to emphasize is characterization or character development. Literary fiction is really focused on how a character is growing, how they're, they're reacting, how they're learning from their experiences. So the character development is going to be very important, especially the main character or the protagonist. And so you think about the author starting from nothing and developing this well-rounded character that we actually care about. And then the author had to think of all these character traits to make them come alive, things like their age, their gender, what type of job they had, what are their talents, history, their family, friends, their immediate goals, far-reaching goals, what do they like, what do they not like, what is their overall personality, what are their strong points or good virtues, what are the weak points or flaws or fears, what makes them like a real life human being. And so when we are reading the story, we're analyzing and finding all those details as we're looking at what the character does, what they say, how they react to others and to different situations. The setting is the time, place, and the atmosphere in which a story takes place. All that environmental factors go in with setting. In the story of Hour, we see that it's late 1890s, right at the end of the Victorian era. It's in America. It's inside a room of a middle-class home. It's looking out at the street, springtime, cloudy with patches of blue in the sky, birds singing, merchants selling their wares. So we can start making connections between all of these details and understanding what they mean and what they, what type of theme they relate to. For example, being inside a home could be, her being inside that room could be symbolic of her being trapped inside herself. As, as a woman in Victorian age society, she didn't have that many rights to even think or 
be herself. Springtime is a time of hope and new beginnings. Cloudy with patches of blue. Cloudy means scary, bad, for you know, ominous. And patches of blue means a little bit of ray of hope, a little way of escape. Um, so we can see these details and start making connections to what their the whole story is about. Point of view is all about what type of narrator or storyteller did the author choose to tell the story. Uh, if there's a first person narrator, then the character themselves would be telling a story. If story of an hour were in first person narration, Mrs. Mallory would be saying, well, I went into my room and I just thought and thought and thought. So we would be hearing it from her point of view directly. Later on, we're going to be reading another story, which is in chapter six called AMP, which is first person. Third person omniscient, there's a godlike narrator and they're telling the whole story and they can see everybody's point of view. In the book that you're looking, that we're using this semester, the story, The Storm, is third person omniscient. Third person limited point of view, that's where the narrator is not a character story. They're godlike narrator looking down at all the characters and they can see mainly one main character's thoughts. A third person objective point of view, the narrator is not the character story, but he can see and the narrator can see and all the action, hear what they're saying, but it cannot get any uh, clo very close to their thoughts or feelings. Here's a better look at the third person point of views. Third person omniscient, you see that godlike narrator looking at everybody's thoughts and feelings. Third person limited, they mainly see into one person's thoughts and feelings. And all the rest of the characters are mainly um, relayed as they are affecting that character. Third person objective, like a fly on the wall, they just stand there and they watch, and they listen, but they are not close to the character's thoughts or feelings. And the story of an hour is most of the time a third person limited narration. <clears throat> Excuse me. So the narrator, it does start out with Richard, as so we know a little bit about Richard and what Josephine are thinking, but for the majority of the story, it's third person limited. We're mostly in Mrs. Mallard's thoughts and feelings, the protagonist's thoughts and feelings. When she goes into her room, we get psychically closer. It means we're very psychic. We can see into her thoughts and feelings. We get closer and closer to her psychically until we know more about her feelings than she actually does. So that shows us that the narrator is separate from the character. It actually delves, it's like a ghost possessing her soul. And we actually know that she only loved her husband sometimes. That's something that she wouldn't admit to herself. Um, when she leaves the room, the narrator does start to withdraw from her and look at her a little bit more from the outside perspective. Again, but we're still mainly in her thoughts and feelings. We're not jumping into anybody else's thoughts and feelings. Um, but the very last line is very cold and aloof, so it's interesting that the psychic distance totally withdraws and we're left with an almost objective narrative style that she's dead and all that remains is the cold verdict of society that she's dead and it was a joy that kills. Iron There's a little bit of irony there too because we know that she didn't die because she was so happy to see her husband alive, but she actually died because she all of a sudden realized that all those years that she was imagining herself living in perfect freedom are now snatched away from her. Um, the plot of a short story. So we, in the book, it shows you, it'll show you um, on the chapter about plot, it'll show you pictures and diagrams of plot, a little um, triangular plot diagram. But I'm gonna mainly look at a very simple version of plot. Concepts like catalyst, that's the event that sets the story in motion. Conflict, that's what hinders the main character from achieving his or her goals, that struggle within themselves. And then the climax, that's the point where the main character has to make a decision or take a decisive action. At this point, there's no turning back. And then we ask our question there in the following action is, does the character win or lose the prize? Do they gain knowledge or do they gain success? They get an awareness, an epiphany moment, or does the main character lose the prize? Is success snatched away from them? Do they give up? Remember, we're interested in how characters react to conditions provided in the story. In the story of an hour, the catalyst is that she learns about her husband being killed in a train crash. And that conflict is an internal conflict. She's struggling with her feelings that she's happy that he's gone and she's wondering is it okay to be happy not so much happy that he's dead because she still loved him remember sometimes but that she's happy that now she has her own life to live 
Um, and at the climax, she's at the top of the stairs. That's very um, symbolic of the climax. And she's goddess of victory is the words they use. I love that um, phrase. And she's at the top of the stairs, determined to have a full, happy life of being free and independent. She's trying, reaching for that prize. Um, but did she win? Well, she did win out over herself. She conquered all those fears and inhibitions that society had put on her. But her victory is snatched away by fate. Once she was sick already with a heart problem, she'd gone through a lot of emotional um, upheaval. But then she sees that all those years are, no, are shut. You know, there's no longer, that door is no longer open to her because her husband is alive. People think learning piano takes a really long time, but that's false. Here's how long it really takes with this new method. <clears throat> now we look at, remember, we're going to take all those literary elements and help us understand a theme. as a universal concept this story is built around. So the concept is usually an issue that we as a society and human beings need to deal with. So it's going to be common to us as human beings. It could be things like gender expectation. What do our society expect of people to be? If they're a man, they should act like this. If they're a woman, they should act like that. Um, poverty. How do we um, make sure that everybody has food and shelter? Coming of age. What are the things people go through as they're going from that transition from being a teenager to an adult? Um, prejudice, the struggle between good and evil, repression of women, um, all sorts of different things that we could look at these issues that could be a theme that we're going to pull from the story. Is there a right or wrong theme? Well, when you're exploring, there's there could be many, many different themes. The story of an hour deals with a lot of different things from equality to the repression of women in the Victorian age to expectations of women, expectations of what a man's supposed to be, family relationships, communications, a lot of different themes. So when you're looking at explore themes that make sense to you based on the details that you find when you're annotating the story. And here's an example of me when I annotated the story. You're going to have the power process that's going to help you, but you want to take that power process and actually build on it, especially when you're going to have to be writing about some of these stories. And when you actually get to where you're writing a story, about a story for your papers, you want to do a lot more annotating of the, on the story, adding to what you already put in the power process. So the things that I noticed when I was annotating the story was a title. And this title makes me think of how our lives could change in just one hour. Um, that Mrs. Mallard is a married woman. So we see that her Mrs. Mallard, and look at how what the names that they use call Mrs. Mallard. Look at when she's actually, they use her first name, Louise, and look at when they're calling her a wife or whatever they're calling her. That's kind of designating what her role is at that moment. She has heart trouble, so I noticed that at the beginning. So there's some foreshadowing. Um, and then they mention that Mrs. Mallard acts differently when she finds out that he's dead. She doesn't act like what most women would. Most women would be in shock and wouldn't be able to process that information that fast. But she starts crying right away. Um, there's lots of words that mean are kind of spooky, like haunted and possessed and reaching toward her. So different words that are gothic in tone. Spring means new life, new beginnings, happy, refreshing. So I'm wondering how is this story about someone dying also about someone finding a new beginning? As you're reading your stories, not just this one, but the uh, stories that we're going to be reading, I want you to delve in and start looking for the details and point out those nuggets of gold that will help you to find out what the message of the story is. What is the meaning that we can pull from the story? What is the theme, the issue that we can learn more about, to empathize with other people and under other conditions and to help us solve some problems in this world? Thank you for listening. Talk to you later. Bye. This is Kyler, and we're going to be looking at Okay, so uh, again, we saw in this video the uh, summary of the points that you need or the elements that you need to focus on when you are reading a short story. As usual, uh, in all literary works, there is always a message behind the piece. And the author or the poet or the writer, they wanted to tell you something. And they put it in the point of view either from them as a narrator or as one of the character, the main character in the story it, uh, called the protagonist. 
So this is the main character, or who or he or she trying to uh, tell you uh, the, the, the message of the writer, whether it is direct or indirect. We spoke about the ending of any story that it could be open ending or closing ending, not necessarily to be happy ending. It all depends on how the poet wants to close his literary work. You can leave it to you as a reader to figure out what will happen or they give you the final um, result. Now, the most important piece here that I want you to focus on is the characterization in the short story. And later on, we will be following or doing the same thing in uh, the novel. The, the coming unit, we will be uh, working on a novel. Uh, the novel is similar to what we do in a short story, but with more in-depth. So let's, let's get practice from this unit even. So the characterization is really, really important for you to know uh, how the character started. The, the author or the story writer can start with a certain character that is like, let's say, naive, uneducated, uh, unable to read and write. But later on, after certain events, we see that there is movement, there is development, there is raise, rising uh, moments for this character developed or um, changed to something else, or they undergo a lot of um, problems and they learned a lesson. So depending on the story, what we want to, uh, to, to see, but this is again important for you when you analyze uh, characterization in every story we read, we need to focus on who are the main characters. What happened to them? Did they get any development or they became linear? Look at the word linear, meaning the same, remained the same. They never learned, learned a lesson. They never got any improvement and they are just like tasteless. You know what I mean? Okay, and of course, the events of the story, how it is happening, what, what uh, action led to another action until we reach the climax. And I want you to focus highly on the climax because you will have questions to ask you, what is the climax of this story? What is the plot? What is the rising point in this story? And so on. Uh, so, uh, I am going to uh, show you the um, thing we are we want to do now. So, just uh, let me uh, stop this here and I wanted to share with you another piece here, but let me first give you an example on one of the stories uh, by Anton Chekhov, it's called The Death of the Government Clerk. This is one of the stories we will be uh, studying. This is one of the stories we will be uh, working on. However, let me share with you some information about it first to have a look how we... Uh, manage to understand a story. So this one is going to be kind of a PowerPoint presentation. Remember, you will be doing a presentation too. But for now, I'm going to show you and I will ask you for an assignment, a simple one to do a presentation by the end of uh, our class today. And it's going to be worth 10, uh, 10 marks. It's a class presentation, one of the uh, grades that you need to, to get. Uh, ideally, class is to have your camera uh, turned on because there will be a um, grade for eye contact and for communicating with everyone. Since you do not want to have the camera on, at least you need to uh, accept the questions from the whole class, from me, if we want to ask you about the assignment that we will do in the second half of our class today. Okay. So anyway, let's have a look at the, uh, the presentation, this one. It's about the story 
of the short story of the death of the government clerk. Okay. So this is the death of a government clerk. This is a story that you will be reading. So as you can see, these are the most important thing you need to look at. Uh, the author is Anton Chekhov, and the type or the genre of the uh, short story is fiction. Uh, the protagonist, uh, meaning the main character in the story, his name is Ivan Dimitrich. He is a government clerk. He is polite, respectful, sincere, and a worried individual. His character is worried. His, his nature is irritated, okay? So the, the writer or the author starts by giving you a hint about this character. Let's see if this person is going to be developed or not. Okay. Ivan is very much irritating to his superior due to the fact that he cannot live with himself until he apologizes for spattering on Brizalov. Although he is irritating, he had the best intentions. He wanted to address Brizalov as his superior and apologize sincerely for his mistake. Do you know what the meaning of spattering? Can you uh, figure out the meaning and tell me by voice? Because when I'm sharing, I can't see your uh, chat box. What is the meaning of spattering? Because this is an important uh, event, um, uh, piece of uh, event for you to understand the meaning of the story. What is the meaning of spattering? And I want you to just uh, have your mic on and tell me what is the meaning of spattering. Hmm? Hurry up. Hmm? No one? <laughs> Very simple word meaning. Hmm. What do you know when, what do you do when you sneeze? Hey class, I need to hear your voice. I wanted to see, by the way, there, there is a mark for participation in the class. I see somebody wrote something here. Okay, okay, yes sir, okay. Thank you, at least yes sir responded. And here you have it, can you see it? Can you see it here? So spattering is another word for saying that someone spit on another person. So sometimes we do it unaccidentally, like unintentionally, by coincidence, by accident, when you just sneeze, okay? All right, so we'll see that people uh, sometimes do not like uh, let things go. When you are sneezing, you, you get some spray of the, the fluids that come from uh, uh, people, okay? All right, so uh, as you can see here, the antagonist, the person who is opposing this one uh, is Brazilov, a civilian general serving in the Department of Transport. He is a rude person, annoyed and irritated old gentleman, as you can see in the picture here, who is very frustrated and embarrassed because Ivan accidentally spattered on him while he was sneezing. So this, do you think this is intentional or it came uh, by coincidence, by accident? Definitely, when you are sneezing, you do not plan to spit on people around you. So uh, Brezalov was being rude and even while he was, uh, sorry, he was rude to even while 
he was trying to apologize and he didn't accept the apology. Let's now focus because I will ask you after the presentation, I will ask you to communicate your own thoughts. And I want you please to use your own words to tell me what do you think? If somebody apologizes to you, if they did a, a mistake by by accident, they didn't intend to do that. How your response should be? Let's discuss this when we are done with the uh, presentation. So he was rude and arrogant. Arrogant when you are a snob and you do not accept the apology of somebody else. Now let's talk about the setting. Here is how you will be doing, my dear class. You will be doing the same presentation using PowerPoint about one of the stories of your choice that I will let you know in a minute. OK, so you will be doing the same thing. You will talk about the author and you will talk about the setting. You will talk about the main character, the main character opposing the protagonist, antagonist, and you talk about the setting. So the story takes place in the, uh, uh, the 1800s where everyone has to show high levels of respect towards all of their superiors. At this time, everybody used to call their uh, superiors or supervisor master, master, sir, any of those. Not like our the days now, you can just uh, call your boss by their name. It's a, it was a little bit different at that time. So the story first takes place in the uh, clutches of Cornville where a major event in the story occurs and proceeds to go back and forth between Ivan's house and the Brazilov's re reception room. So it's really important for you to mention exactly the same. When you analyze a story of the ones that we are going to discuss, I want you to do the same. The setting, when did it happen? Where was it? In which uh, location? Is it in the bus station? Is it in the train station? Is it in the mansion of the house? Where is it exactly? Okay. okay, so now let's talk about the exposition, the introduction, and then we move on to the rising action. So, uh, at Clutches de Corneville, Ivan and uh, Brezelov get into an incident where Ivan accidentally, the guy didn't mean it, it came by accident, uh, spatters on uh, Brezelov's when he sneezes. Ivan tries to apologize to his su uh, superior, but Brezelov uh, will not accept his apology or even fully listen to him. This causes major discomfort and uneasiness with Ivan. Let's move on to the rising action. What will happen? And look at the way the person designs their uh, PowerPoint presentation, moving to the rising action and then moving to the climax. Please pay attention to this because you will be doing a similar assignment. So after Ivan's incident with Brazilov, he goes home and has a conflict with both Brazilov and himself. This is what we call inner, uh, uh, we have outer conflicts and inner conflict. He is frustrated and embarrassed that Brazilov will not accept his apology and he is causing trouble but he cannot live with himself until Brazilov has heard and fully understood that Ivan is deeply sorry for his actions. So the next morning, Ivan got a new haircut and went to Brazilov reception room. He went to the office and tried to apologize, but Brazilov would not accept his apology still. He didn't want to accept his apology and thought that Ivan was making fun of him. So Ivan went home and thought he would write a letter. Probably if he writes a letter, he might listen. Look at the climax. Now we move to the climax. The most important event in the story. Here is what we call the turning point. 
Ivan went back to Brozolov's reception room the next day because he felt that he couldn't write a letter. He had to apologize in person. Ivan went to Brozolov and talked about how he tried to apologize the day before. But while he was in the middle of talking, Brozolov screamed and he says, be off. Brozolov suddenly turned purple and started shaking all over. He, he scared him, okay? Ivan whispered, what? Numb with fear, he was afraid, brother love, then, then repeated, be off, stamping. So this is, again, the most important event that he got scared. This is the climax of the story. And then we move on to the falling action. The, the following events lead the story towards the end, bit by bit. Let's look at that. While Ivan was in the reception room, something seemed to give way in his stomach. You know the feeling of a butterfly feeling in your stomach when you are afraid or scared or something? Similarly, Ivan felt the same way. So he reeled to the door, seeing nothing and hearing nothing. He went out into the street and staggered home. He was walking like slowly and uh, kind of sad because the other guy didn't accept his apology. So what was the resolution? What was the almost end of the story? When Ivan got home, he did not even bother to take off his uniform. Why? Because he is full of frustration and he was so terribly sad. He went over to the sofa, laid down, and just simply died. And here I want you to comment on that. I will give you time to comment, but just think about it. Can people die because of sadness? So I want you to think it over and write your own thoughts if you want to check if that has any scientific background, can people die because of sadness? Maybe you can read on uh, online and you get something from science to prove it, okay? So we will discuss that after the uh, presentation is over. So this is uh, the, the, uh, the conflict that was here between Ivan and the Brazilov. Ivan was trying to apologize to Brazilov for spattering on him when uh, he screamed be off. Brazilov suddenly turned purple and started shaking. Ivan became numb with fear and later died. Throughout the whole story, Brazilov and Ivan clashed between their different views of what the other person was trying to do. So this is kind of a summary or kind of, uh, you know, um, putting your point of view or analysis about the conflict. What kind of conflict was it? Now here, the lesson or more of the story. What are the lessons that you can get from the uh, story? Show acceptance and understanding towards everyone. So this is one message the author Anton Ch Chakov wants to tell you. And by the way, he is a great short story writer from Russia. I personally, I remember when I was in university studying English literature, we studied a lot of his works, really, really, I call it global, because when he talks about human uh, traits and the human suffering, it can be applicable to all people, not only uh, Russian people, but all over the world. So the first message you want to tell you is to show acceptance and understanding towards everyone. If somebody wants to apologize for you, you need, you must accept their uh, uh, apology. All they had to do was understand what the other person was trying to accomplish. You need to figure out the people, the person in front of you might have problems. I could understand what kind of problem they had before. Okay, so this is the, uh, the, the aim of the story. This is the aim of uh, 
the writer, the author, what he wants to tell you. So I'm gonna give you like 10 minutes for you to give me your own ideas about the uh, the characters in the story. We just re uh, took um, had a PowerPoint presentation. Uh, you, you are going to tell me here, let me write down what you will be doing here. So you will give me something about the characters in the story. And you are going to tell me about the themes. And you are going to tell me about the uh, can people die out of sadness. This is a question that you can search online and get back to me with answers. Okay, so the characters and I didn't I'm not going to ask you about the setting or the the title or the author because we talked about it in details in the presentation. What I really want you to figure out what are the themes the writer wants to discuss other than accepting the apology of people. And uh, do you think people can die out of sadness and tell me about the character uh, development in, uh, in, in the story? Take 10 minutes and I will stop you at uh, 7.15. 